Hi everyone, this is going to be a bit of a quicker video where I'm going to cover a common question I've been getting over on Discord. And that question is, how can we automate multiple signals so it only enters a trade when both of those signals appear on the same bar? So let's take a look at this MACD and RSI for an example. Here we can see the MACD is crossing up. At the same time, the RSI is crossing above 30. And only when both of these are triggering at the exact same time do we get an entry signal. So there are really two different ways we can achieve this with the Predator. I'm going to quickly cover both of these methods using this exact same MACD RSI setup. But just know we can use these same concepts to automate many different indicators. Whether you're using draw object signals like text or arrows or other indicators with plot value signals like we're doing in this video. I do have a full user guide and separate videos that cover how the signal system works in a lot more detail. So I highly recommend if you haven't watched those videos, start there, then come back to this one. I promise if you start with those videos, it's going to help you a whole lot better to understand what we're doing in this video here today. And one last thing before we get started, this example is not trading advice. I'm just using this setup as an example to show you guys what is possible to combine multiple signals to enter on the same bar. So if you're using this RSI MACD, make sure you guys test it out, you set your own risk. And also there's a free trial available for the Predator X. You can learn more about it on Discord. Links for everything are going to be down below. But with that, let's move on to our chart. All right, so here we're in the Predator properties and we're going down to auto entries. We're going to be using the custom signals. So the first method I'm going to show and what I'm going to recommend, I think for most people, it's going to be just a little bit easier to set up, is going to be a combination of one entry signal and one filter. So I'll show you how that looks, but the idea behind this is just you want one signal to allow your long or short condition, and then you want your other signal to actually execute the trade. So when both of those are combined, then you're going to get together and take that trade. So what I'm going to do for this example, I'm going to set up my RSI as a filter. So just go to one filter, or if you have more than two indicators, you could add multiple filters as well. But again, for this example, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So I'm going to go to plot mode because we're using a plot. And I first want to set up when I want to take my long trades. So for this example, I want to look for my long entries when the RSI crosses above 30. So we go to the on long filter. We're going to switch this to cross above and it's going to allow my longs to be turned on when we cross above 30. Now we don't have to worry about the tags just yet. We can select those from the chart but we are going to move on to what's going to turn off my long filter. So once this signal here, the off gets triggered, it's not going to allow any long trades. And for this example, this part doesn't matter as much because we're going to be canceling it after one bar anyways, but it's always nice to have something for just in case. So for this example, when we cross above 70, uh, I should have, made this chart a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to say 70. Uh, so when we cross above 70, it's going to turn off my long filter. So it's no longer going to allow long trades. Again, this one doesn't matter as much, but it's nice to have anyways. For my shorts, it's going to be the opposite. So we're going to turn on our short, and this is when it's going to allow short entries. So when we cross below the 70 line. So change this value to 70. Then it's going to turn on our shorts and to turn off our shorts. So no longer looking for shorts when we cross below the 30. So this is how you would typically set up a filter. It's just an on and off switch that allows longs or allows shorts to take place. So you turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. But because we only want to take trades if both signals align on the exact same bar, 
we can go up to this option, cancel filter after X bars. Just click on that. And we're going to change this to a value of one. So what this means is once our filter gets turned on, so the RSI crosses above 30, it's only going to have one bar to actually take the trade. If it doesn't detect our entry within that one bar, it's going to turn off our filter and it's not going to allow any new trades. So that is all that we need for our filter. Let's move up here to our entry. And this is where we're going to set up the MACD. So for the MACD is very straightforward as well. We, we're just going to go to plot mode. Again, this doesn't have to be the MACD. This could be any indicator that you have. And for the MACD, the crossover is actually represented by the diff that is this blue line right here. So the moment it crosses above zero, that's when the MACD crosses above the signal line. So all we have to do is cross above zero. That's our long entry. Our short entry is the opposite, is when the diff goes below zero. So cross below zero. So that's all we have to do. Now we can go down to our order management. You can change this around, set it up really any way that you like. Uh, I'm just picking random stuff here. But once you have everything set up to your liking, uh, again, this is not trading advice. I'm just doing this as an example. Just go into your chart. We're going to enable it. And this is where we're going to select our plot tags. So after you get a price change and your PNL is displayed, go up to the top left hand corner and we're going to select all of our plots from the dropdowns. So our entry signal, that was the MACD, that is the diff. So just select the diff for both the long and the short. For your filter, we were using the RSI. So you just have to select the RSI for all of these. And just because it's after hours here, I am going to disable this. Uh, I want to show just the historical performance. Uh, I'm going to run through both examples with historical trades. Then I'll switch over to market replay and see how it would actually take the trade. So I'm going to say show historical trade and I'm switching this order fill resolution to high. I recommend switching this to high just for historical testing. Once we switch over to market replay, we'll change this back to standard. But for now, let's just load this on our chart and see if the results are what we're expecting. All right, so here, let's just zoom out a little bit. Let's take a closer look. Here, we got some MACD crosses. We got some RSI crossings as well, but none of those took until we got both of them on the exact same bar. So here we had the MACD cross, we had the RSI cross, and only then is when it enters the trade. So let's zoom out a little bit here again. And it's the exact same over here. We had the MACD cross above zero, we had the RSI cross above zero, and it enters us into the long trade. And just to see a short work over here or several shorts. So here we crossed below 70 at the same time the MACD crossed below zero, entered us short, got stopped out, but then it crossed back above and then they both crossed below at the exact same time once again and that one happened to be a winner. So now we can verify that both the longs and the shorts work exactly when we need them. And that is when both signals are triggered on the same bar. All right, so back in the properties, I'm going to go over one more way we can achieve this exact same thing. And that is by using a secondary filter. So for this example, I'm just going to copy the same tag for my entry signal, that is the MACD. And again, you don't have to do this part, you can select it from the chart as well but just to make it go a little bit quicker. Now I'm going to remove the entry signal and I'm going to add a secondary filter. So for my second filter, this is where we're going to add the MACD and we're going to set it up in a very similar fashion. 
as we did for the RSI. So we go to plot mode and same thing, you want to cancel filter after X bars. This one, we're also going to cancel it after one bar passes. And that way it's going to ensure we only take trades if both of them align at the same time. So I'm just going to copy that same tag that we just had for our entry. I'm going to fill in all the tags because again, we're using the diff for our signal. And then to turn on our longs, I'm going to cross above zero. To turn off the long, I'm just going to cross below zero. And then to turn on the shorts, so on short, cross below zero. Then we turn off the shorts when we cross above zero. And that is all that we have to do. Now let's scroll up to the top of the filters. When you add two or more, you're going to see a new option come up and that is the enter at filter align. And all this does is when all your filters are facing in the same direction, it's going to enter a trade. So again, let's see how that looks. And I'm going to enable once again, and it's going to basically take the same trades because again, we're just waiting until both filters are in alignment at the exact same time. And for those filters, you are going to see them come on and off over here. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in market replay in just a minute, but just to verify everything is working, we get some crosses here, no entries, we don't get entries until again, both of them cross the MACD and the RSI at the same time. Again, let's just verify the longs. So cross above zero, cross above 30, long position. So those are the two methods we can automate signals if they're both triggered on the same bar. Let me just go to market replay and we can see it actually taking the trade so we can get a bit of a better understanding how it's actually supposed to look like. All right, so here we're going to be taking just a few trades on market replay, but first let's just set it up to make sure everything is running properly. So whenever we're running a strategy in real time, and by real time, I don't mean actual live data. I mean, just the state that it's in. When the price is actually moving, whether it's market replay or you're trading an actual live chart, the state real time is just considered once the price is actually physically moving and the strategy is taking trades that you can actually see on the chart. So whenever we're trading in a real time state, I do recommend just turning off the show historical trades. The main reason being is Sometimes when we have PNL limits, uh, kill switches, things of that nature, the show historical trades is going to take all of that data into account for your trading day. So I see this a lot. Some users will have show historical trades. It gets all of the previous historical trades and they set up a PNL limit and it stops taking trades. And that's because your PNL limit has already been reached. So just be careful of things like that. I always just recommend everybody when you're trading in real time, just turn it off. It's going to make things a lot easier on yourself. Now, the next thing I recommend, and I do see this one happen quite a bit. This one can cause some issues again, when we're trading in real time, the order fill should only be standard when we're actually taking physical trades. And just because of how some things are calculated within the predator to make it a little bit more efficient, high fill resolution can interfere with real time trades. So again, very, very important. Always make sure to switch this to standard again, only during that real time state. So once we have everything, I just loaded up our same settings here. Again, guys, this is not trading advice. This is just a random spot on market replay. Just again, to show you how we can automate multiple signals. So they only trigger on the same bar, but ideally you would use your own indicators for this. So let me move this over and everything has a check mark. Let's just let's go by a little bit faster. See, we get a signal. 
All right, so here it went just a little bit quick, but here we had the RSI, it crossed below the 70. At the exact same time, our MACD, the diff crossed below zero. So the predator is able to recognize that and enter the trade. Again, any management you have selected. And we could also add trail stops, uh, whatever you need to make your strategy happen. Uh, it's all available here within the panel. And we'll see if we can get a long trade as well. So here we're both below 30 and below zero. We'll see if maybe once we come up, maybe we'll get lucky. So here it's the same thing. We crossed above zero. So that is your diff. At the same time, the RSI crossed above 30. And now it enters us into a long position. Again, based on both filters being in alignment at the exact same time. So that's all it really is. It's just a way to automate your signals. So again, they enter when both of them are on the same bar. And just as a little bit of a bonus tip, let's go back into the properties. If you want to give yourself a little bit of a range, so maybe you don't want the exact bar, maybe you want within two or three bars. All you have to do is come down here and this cancel filter within X bars, you can just increase this number as well. Again, whatever fits your strategy, it's completely up to you. But I think I'm going to cut the video here. I really hope you guys found this video useful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord or send me a message support at tradesaber.com. But as always, take care, enjoy.